There used to be a school down on La Pohoihoi Point, which is right down at sea level. In that tsunami, 20 children and four teachers were killed by the tsunami. It's especially tragic because, of, uh, because nobody understood what they were seeing. The first wave was just gentle flooding and then the ocean receded. People went out on the, on the receded ocean, receding ocean. And it wasn't until the third wave came along, which was half an hour after the first wave, that, that anybody died. So if anyone had understood what they were looking at, they could have just walked away from the ocean and nobody would have died. The most damaging tsunamis come from big um, subduction zone earthquakes. Th those are earthquakes that occur where the ocean is sliding down underneath the edge of the continent. The overriding plate, um, the continent gets deformed more and more and more, and eventually it can't take it anymore and it breaks and, in, and releases, and that's the earthquake. So you're changing the shape of the ocean bottom over a huge area of the seafloor in just a few minutes, faster than the water can flow out of the way. The seafloor lifts up the ocean, and you get a lump of excess water at the sea surface, and that lump collapses in it, and that produces waves. The waves attack the nearby shoreline, but they also spread out across the ocean to us in Hawaii. And it's not just one wave, it's, it's a whole bunch of waves because the initial lump oscillates. And, and the waves are a, a very long distance apart. They, they may be 100 miles or more from one wave to the next. Hawaii is right in the middle of the Pacific, so we are surrounded in subduction zones. In 1960, the greatest earthquake ever measured happened in Chile. It took 16 hours for that tsunami to reach Hawaii. In 2011, Japan produced an enormous tsunami which crossed the entire Pacific Ocean. That tsunami took eight hours to reach Hawaii. Our closest and most dangerous threat is from Alaska, which is four to five hours. The locally generated tsunami is what keeps me awake at night. The main danger for tsunamigenic events is Hawaii Island. We have a couple of spots on the island of Hawaii that are a specific concern. The first one is down south at Kalapana. And there, the tsunami can arrive in less than two minutes if you are that close. And you can watch from the video the travel times. 14 minutes to Hilo, 20 minutes to Kailua Kona, Hana, 25 minutes, Ka'alui, 41 minutes, Honolulu, 46 minutes, and Kauai 54. You might hear a loud roar or a huge rumble. But the other thing you might hear is complete silence. If the water pulls out, there is no ocean on the shoreline any longer and you won't hear the waves lapping. Well, what do you feel? You feel it shaking. If the shaking is so strong that it knocks you down, then as soon as you're able to, you need to get to high ground. If you are near the shoreline, be aware of nature's own warning signs to evacuate now from a tsunami. Feel. If the ground shakes so strongly that you have difficulty standing, or if you feel any shaking that lasts more than 20 seconds, a tsunami may follow. Listen. Tsunamis often roar or make a sound like a freight train as they approach. Look. If the ocean does anything strange, an unusual rise or fall of the sea level lasting several minutes, expect a big wave to appear. If you're in a building and feel an earthquake so strong you have difficulty standing, first protect yourself from falling objects that may shake loose. Drop to the floor. Take cover under a strong desk or table and hold on. Start counting. If shaking is still going on after 20 seconds, evacuate as soon as you can. Immediately evacuate to higher ground to escape potential tsunami waves. You may not have much time. To summarize, for a local earthquake and tsunami, you should become aware of potential danger by detecting the natural tsunami warning signs. An official warning may be issued, but you should act independent of an official warning because of the close proximity of the earthquake and the potential to generate a tsunami that can impact the coast in mere minutes. For a distant tsunami, most people will be alerted from an official warning and will have at least three hours to act. Warnings are provided by the siren, TV, radio, and your smartphone. A key component of the emergency warning system is the all-hazard statewide outdoor warning siren. Turn on your local radio or television to listen to emergency messages. NOAA Weather Radio will be activated. If you are on Oahu, you can also sign up to receive emergency email. 
text, and push alerts directly to your smartphone on HNL Info from the Honolulu Department of Emergency Management's website. For Kauai, sign up for emergency alert notifications on the county's emergency management website using the Wireless Emergency Notification System, or WENS. On Maui, use Maui Emergency Management Agency's MEMA Alerts Service. For Hawaii Island, to receive emergency notifications, sign up on the Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency's website or by using the Everbridge app. In addition to public alerts from the state and counties, the federal government has arranged with major cell phone carriers to provide wireless emergency alerts, known as WIA. If you go to the settings on your phone and enable the notifications, you will receive the relevant emergency messages, whether you're on Oahu, Hawaii County, or out of state. To protect life and property, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center's Tsunami Warning System provides advanced warning of destructive tsunamis. The PTWC notifies the state and county emergency management offices when a tsunami watch or a tsunami warning is issued. A tsunami watch is a heads-up advanced warning that action may be necessary. Watches are based purely on seismic information without confirmation that a destructive tsunami is underway. A tsunami watch will either be upgraded to a tsunami warning or canceled. In Hawaii, the sirens do not sound for a tsunami watch. When a watch is issued, the public should be watching their TV, listening to the radio, and monitoring messages from their respective county's emergency management office. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center may also inform the public in the form of an advisory or a low-level warning. Sometimes, while there is a significant tsunami, it will not be large enough to require an evacuation of the coast. Instead, instructions may be given to clear the beaches, and people are advised to leave the water or head out to sea if they are in boats, though an evacuation is not ordered. A tsunami warning is the highest level of a tsunami alert. Warnings are issued due to the imminent threat of a tsunami from a large undersea earthquake or following confirmation that a potentially destructive tsunami is underway. Warnings advise that the appropriate action be taken in response to the tsunami threat. Such actions could include the evacuation of low-lying coastal areas and the movement of boats and ships out of harbors to deep water. Warnings are updated at least hourly or as conditions warrant to continue, expand, reduce, or cancel the warning. In Hawaii, the outdoor warning sirens will sound at least three hours before arrival for a distant tsunami. To prepare for a warning, residents near the coast should prepare an evacuation kit with basic supplies including food, water, sanitary items, medication, a radio, and flashlight. Carry this kit in a backpack or duffel bag. When a tsunami warning is issued, it is most likely to be for a tsunami similar in size to the ones we've experienced historically from 1819 to 2020. These past tsunamis help us define the tsunami evacuation zone. Scientists have also modeled a worst-case scenario for a tsunami that has not impacted Hawaii in recorded history, but could occur. This extreme tsunami has a low percentage of occurrence, but extremely high consequence. If this happens, you may need to evacuate further inland. Tsunami evacuation maps can be found online at the state or county's emergency management or civil defense agency websites. When there is a tsunami evacuation warning, evacuate the red area and go to the yellow or green areas. If in the rare case there is an extreme tsunami warning, evacuate out of the red and yellow areas and go to the green area. The key to remember is to evacuate along the route and to the location that's in your family's emergency evacuation plan. Your emergency evacuation plan should cover all family members under different scenarios, such as if someone is at home, work, or school. Each member of your family should know what to do and where to go, regardless if you are together or separated. It is important to review and discuss the plan each year, especially if there are any changes to a family member's status. In your family emergency evacuation plan, you should have an emergency communications plan. All family members should be able to contact each other during an emergency, preferably by text. In your communications plan, designate a person out of state that will serve as a central contact to help coordinate or reunite family members if they become separated during an emergency. During an incident, phone lines may become overwhelmed. Limit phone calls to help keep systems clear for emergency responders. Use text messages if you must communicate. To develop your family emergency evacuation plan, consider where your home, your work, and where your children attend school are in relationship to the tsunami evacuation zone and the extreme tsunami evacuation zone. 
Your family emergency evacuation plan should map out a route and final destination, whether you are coming from home, work, or school. Anywhere outside an evacuation zone should be safe. You only need to reach high ground away from the coast. You may need to stay at the evacuation site for several hours, so prepare your evacuation kit accordingly. When a tsunami watch is issued, watch your local TV or tune into local radio, as well as NOAA weather radio for emergency information. Prepare to implement your emergency evacuation plan. When a tsunami warning is issued, evacuation alerts will be broadcast over local radio and TV, your county's emergency alert system, by wireless emergency alerts, or WIA, and by local authorities over social media. Should you hear an outdoor alert siren, turn on your radio or TV to listen to the emergency message. During an evacuation alert, the public will be advised of which tsunami evacuation zones to evacuate from. This will either be the Tsunami Evacuation Zone or the Extreme Tsunami Evacuation Zone. Evacuate as quickly and safely as possible to the destination in your emergency evacuation plan with your evacuation kit. Let's now go through some specific scenarios. For families with students that go to a school that is located in a Tsunami Evacuation Zone, do not drive to pick up your children during a tsunami warning. This will add to traffic congestion, prevent emergency vehicles from reaching their destination, and expose people to unnecessary danger. All schools located in a tsunami evacuation zone have their own tsunami emergency evacuation plan. Parents should familiarize themselves with their child's school emergency evacuation plan. Schools located within emergency evacuation zones should communicate their emergency plans to parents each school year. If you do not have this information, ask the school to provide it. You should review this plan and resolve any questions regarding evacuation and student pickup with school officials at the beginning of the school year. Parents should not attempt to pick up their children as this can cause unnecessary traffic congestion and danger. Listen to the radio and TV for instructions. When the all clear signal is given, follow the pickup instructions in the school's emergency evacuation plan. If you are at home and outside the evacuation zone, stay there and off the roads. If you are at a home that is located inside an evacuation zone and a tsunami warning is issued, initiate your family emergency evacuation plan. Evacuate as quickly as possible with your evacuation kit. If you are at work and outside an evacuation zone when a tsunami warning is issued, refer to and initiate your workplace emergency evacuation plan. Stay at work and off the roads. If you are at work, and in the evacuation zone when a tsunami warning is issued, initiate your family emergency evacuation plan. Evacuate as quickly as possible with your evacuation kit. For a locally generated tsunami, there may not be time for an evacuation warning to be issued. Your signal to evacuate will be nature's own warning signs. A strong earthquake, making it difficult to stand. The sudden rise and fall of ocean water, or a loud rumbling noise from the ocean, or silence. If you are near the shore or at a beach, immediately head away from the shoreline to higher ground. If you are caught near the shoreline, consider using vertical evacuation. To vertically evacuate, proceed to the fourth floor or higher, preferably in a building that is 10 stories or taller. Vertical evacuation is the preferred method of evacuation in Waikiki. In all other areas, get out of the applicable evacuation zone as quickly as possible and only use vertical evacuation as a last resort. For any tsunami, get out of the applicable evacuation zone as quickly as possible. If you are in a densely populated area, such as on Oahu or Maui, the use of cars to evacuate can cause traffic jams and gridlock that traps people in the evacuation zone. So plan to walk to a safe location if possible. If traffic gridlock will not be a problem and distances are great, driving out may be necessary. If you are already driving or in a vehicle, initiate your emergency evacuation plan, proceed to higher ground, and get out of the evacuation zone and off the road as quickly as possible. After evacuating a tsunami zone, do not return to the area until an all-clear has been issued from your local emergency management or civil defense agency. If the tsunami was non-destructive, the all-clear may take hours. If the tsunami was destructive, the all-clear may take days. Continue to monitor the situation by local TV and radio and with your county emergency notification system. A cancellation of a tsunami warning from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center is not an all clear. Any tsunami that has a shoreline run-up of one foot or more is dangerous. 
That threshold of danger was exceeded all around the state during the Japan tsunami of March 11, 2011. There were at least three places where the tsunami reached over 15 feet above normal sea level. Molo'a'a on Kauai, Mokulei'a on Oahu, and the Po'opo'o on the island of Hawaii. A 15-foot rise is an extremely dangerous tsunami. At Kahului, the water did not reach quite that high, but saw the greatest flooding, which was almost half a mile inland. By all measures, this was a very dangerous tsunami. Fortunately, almost everyone in Hawaii took the warning seriously. Approximately 70,000 people took the appropriate action to evacuate. Thanks to widespread public cooperation, Hawaii's response was effective and no lives were lost.